The Make Deposits function can be found under the Banking drop-down menu, or it can be opened up through any of the other related icons for this function found in QuickBooks. However, before we open up this window, we should first discuss the role Undeposited Funds has in the Make Deposits function. QuickBooks has a unique feature that involves an account called Undeposited Funds, which in effect represents a current asset holding account QuickBooks creates to record amounts received primarily through received payments, representing payments made against accounts receivable or sales receipts, which represent cash sales. There are other ways, for example, through a journal entry that the undeposited funds account can be increased, but the two main ways are again through the receive payment and sales receipt functions. The way undeposited funds gets decreased is when a deposit is made to record the consolidation of individual payments deposited. The reason QuickBooks has created this function is as follows. When you receive checks in the mail and or process credit card transactions, the amounts of the individual transactions are accumulated on a deposit slip for checks or batched by your credit card company for credit card sales, and then a total amount is deposited in your bank account. It is the total that the bank records versus the individual amounts that make up the deposit total. Therefore, since the total is what is shown on your bank statement, the act of reconciling is made easier if totals can be compared to totals versus having to figure out what individual amounts make up a total on a bank statement. If QuickBooks recorded the individual amounts in your bank account, then you would have to do the tedious task of reconciling detailed payments to the total deposits shown on your bank statement. By using a separate undeposited funds account, QuickBooks allows you to record the detail in this account and then accumulate the detail to create a deposit total that then gets recorded in your bank account so the total deposit amount made can be compared to the total amount that the bank records. So this is how it works. When you open the Make Deposits function, the first window that typically comes up is the Payments to Deposit window, representing all the individual payments that have been entered in QuickBooks, but not yet deposited in QuickBooks. To make the deposit in QuickBooks, what you do is select the items to be deposited, and then once the selection has been made, a total will appear on the bottom along with a tally of how many payments have been selected. There are selection tools up on the top of the window allowing you to select the payment method type and then you also have the ability to sort payments by the payment method or date. Once you are satisfied with your selection, then click on the OK button and then the Make Deposits window will open and reflect in the body of the window the individual items you have selected to come out of the undeposited account as reflected in this column and up on top the deposit to account can be selected which is typically a bank type of account. Also the date memo field can be edited. The body of the window will reflect who the payment was received from and as mentioned the from account is shown. The memo, check number, payment method, class and amount will show if they were selected when the original transactions were recorded. But if they weren't or you want to change them, you can do so at this point in the process. Note the deposit total is shown on the bottom and represents what will show in the deposit to account. That is only the total is reflected versus the individual amounts. However, in the undeposited funds account, the individual amounts are relieved versus the singular total. Another feature to take note of is the ability to record a decrease in the final deposit total by taking into account any cash you may get back or transfer you may make at the time of deposit for such things as petty cash. The way this works is you indicate which account the cash back is going into, such as the petty cash account. You can also add a memo, and then, of course, you have to put in the amount in the last field, which will be the amount ducted from the deposit total as appropriate. 
The top taskbar allows you to go to previous or future deposits as well as save, print, reopen the payments to deposit window, review any history of the transaction selected in the body, or attach a file if desired. For example, a scanned copy of the bank deposit receipt. Although initially the undeposited funds process versus just directly recording each individual payment receipt into your bank account may seem cumbersome, the reality will be once you understand that the ability to record your deposits in total in your bank account will save a lot of unnecessary effort in trying to reconcile your bank account deposit totals to your payment receipt amounts in QuickBooks, you will be glad this feature exists since it's a lot easier comparing totals to totals than having to figure out what payment detail in QuickBooks makes up a given bank deposit total recorded in the bank statement. If we peek under the hood of what transpires when we make a deposit, we can open up our previous deposit and take a look at what is entered in the each account involved by noting the detail that came out of undeposited funds and then going to the undeposited funds account and seeing in the register the individual amounts coming out of the undeposited funds account. And then likewise, if we look at the total that goes into our bank account and then going to the bank account register, we will see the total going into this account. Note that one account, the undeposited funds account, reflects the individual amounts and the bank account reflects the total amounts involved.